Remember when you were a kid and there was that table with like the triangle shaped hole and the square hole and the round hole and then you had the different pegs that you tried to fit into them and you could never get it right because it was really difficult? Well, that's kind of how your brain works too. So in your brain, there are certain receptors, right? And they, they work on with chemical messaging, okay? So let's say you take a, a drug or whatever. Well, that drug has to go in and bind to these receptors. And if it doesn't bind to those receptors in the right way, it's kind of like pushing the square pig through the round hole. It just won't work. And this is where stereochemistry comes into play. Because we talked about different molecules being arranged differently in space. Kind of like your right hand has its thumb over here, but your left hand has its thumb over here. And they're not arranged the, the right way in space. Now, enantiomers are isomers, or stereoisomers, which have the same connectivity, but they differ in the arrangement in space, and they're mirror images of each other. So if we look at this, this molecule here, I have the white one uh, that I'm holding, and then I have a green one which is facing towards you, a red one which is facing away from you, and a blue one which is pointing up. And here I've built its enantiomer, okay? Here we have, I'm holding the white one, the red one's facing away from you, the green one's facing towards you, and the blue one's facing up. Now these are mirror images of each other. You can see, no matter how you look at this, it's a reflection of the other molecule, okay? And uh, a lot of people seem to think, I mean, and just w without, without being used to this concept, it really seems like it's the same molecule. When I'm looking at this, it's like, well, what's, what's the difference here? Well, let's think about the square peg and the round hole. So here's a receptor in your brain, or the thing that you sat at when you were a kid trying to pound the blocks through, and now we have these two different molecules. This one is arranged in the correct way. The blue one is right there, the red one is at one o'clock, and the green one's at four o'clock. <laughs> you can't see it very well because I'm holding it. Now, if you face this white one out towards you, right, and turn it this way, well, everything fits in its right place. The red one goes into the red hole, the blue one goes into the blue hole, and the green one goes into the green hole. You see? So it has the correct configuration in space. Whereas this molecule, its mirror image, right? So here's the red one. Here's the red one. We're going to, like this, so it's mirror images of each other, okay? So this is the one that fit, and this is the other one. I'm gonna grab it by the red. Now the white's pointing towards you, and when I try to put it into there, it doesn't work. Because we get the blue one down here trying to go into the green, and the green one up here trying to go into the blue. Well, what if we rotated it? If I try to put the blue to go into the blue? Well, now the green and the red aren't lining up. If I try to put the green in, now the blue and the red aren't lining up. And it's, there's just no way you could do it. That's because these are enantiomers. They're mirror images of each other, right? Mirror images, but they differ in the arrangement in space. Just like if I have a left-handed glove, or let's say a right-handed glove. This is a terrible looking glove. I could put my right hand into it, but I can't put my left hand into it this way. You might say, well, Justin, just turn your hand around. Yeah, but that doesn't work when it comes to molecules in your brain. So this could be a receptor in the brain, right? And if you take a certain drug that's arranged a certain way in space, then it fits in here. And then once it gets in there, it, really, it tells this neuron to release a signal and it may do whatever it does it may kill pain it may uh, activate some serotonin or whatever but if you have this one here it won't fit it'll, it'll try it won't work 
because you can't get it to go the right way so it won't work and this is one of the reasons why stereochemistry is so important because especially in the pharmaceutical industry you have to get one enantiomer of a drug but you don't want the other one because in a lot of cases the other enantiomer can be very very harmful so this is uh, yeah this is where all this comes from um, I just wanted to kind of show this I hope this really because the reason I wanted to get into this is because it's it's hard when you just look at these two molecules it's hard for them to it's hard to think of them as being different because when you look at it it's like well yeah there's a blue one a green one a red one and a white one they're all connected to that atom how could they possibly be different but if you try to put the square peg in the round hole it doesn't work so I think this is a great way of keeping at least keeping my mind in check and saying oh wait a minute no even even though they look almost exactly alike they are different and this is going to be a very important thing in organic chemistry um, and like I said with you know especially with the pharmaceutical industry you know and none of us here are, are pharmacists right now or uh, at least I, I hope if you're a pharmacist you're not watching this because man <laughs> anyway so it, it is important and that's basically what I wanted to get to